The city of Tavalis is poorly defended, and the Julii will often land troops to attack. Did you know they will not take it if you never build any roads in the city? Have no roads, and the troops stand there forever, keeping the city safe. The second you build roads, they attack, at least in the early game. Your faction leader is Hanno. He has some good military and management stats, yet the biggest letdown here is his age, 65. There is a chance he will die instantly, which makes him pretty useless as the general to your main force. It's too bad they're old. Old people are the greatest. They're full of wisdom and experience. To be honest, he would be best just to have been sacrificed in battle. Just charge him in, using his heavy cavalry, whilst you still have it, and just let the poor old man fall in a blaze of glory. You may want to bring another general from the mainland to prepare to take over Hanno's forces, and then make sure to pass the spymaster retinue over to that new general, to maintain that plus one command in your family. Fiagris, your grandson, is nearby, yet he is not a commander at all, so should not be allowed to take over the forces. If you are lucky, you will get a quick conquest over Sicily with Hanno, and then Fiagris can take over and govern either Syracuse or Lilibium, taking advantage of those management stats. Merchant and Freeman Clerk are very powerful retinues for such cities. Your faction heir is Hasdrubal, and is basically just the reincarnation of his father, looks and stats. He has some interesting traits. The ambusher trait gives plus two command when laying an ambush, and his confident defender trait gives plus one command when defending. So it is possible to get him up to seven command if you use him tactically. In addition, he also gets plus 10 movement points on the campaign map, allowing him to get into those unique positions from where he can spring a trap. He starts in Carthage, and what you do with him depends on your strategy. I have three routes for you to go for. One, the historical play. Send him and an army raised in Carthage by sea to Palma. Pick up the mercenaries and conquer the Iberian barbarians. Then move into southern Gaul and attack Rome from across the Alps. This campaign is very enjoyable, yet it means you will be fighting a tough Rome, and you will constantly be troubled by Numidian raids. Yet it gives you a secure economic base which you are lacking at the start of the game, given how all your cities border enemies. 2. The Defensive Play Send Hasdrubal to fight the Numidians of North Africa, and secure your back before pushing for Rome. This keeps Carthage safe, yet risks a strong Rome. 3. The Offensive Play After taking Sicily, give the Spymaster retinue to Hasdrubal, and instantly hop him over to Italy. If you are lucky, the Brutii would have landed most of their troops in Apollonia. The Scipii would be weak after losing Messana, and then, once you have a good foothold, you can recruit more troops from southern Italy and finish off those Romans. This will take Rome out early, making them not a threat. Yet this all-in push will require a lot of resources, and may possibly result in you losing a city or two elsewhere. Whatever you decide, Hasdrubal should lead the charge. His brother is Burrus, and starts just to the south in Thapsus. An okay commander and trader, who would really be better suited to governing your capital once Hasdrubal leaves. That will leave Thapsus without a general, but given it is going to be a difficult one to defend anyway, that might not be so bad. His younger brother is Theophanes, 
free command stars in southern Iberia. Theophanes really depends on what you plan to do with Hasdrubal. If you fight in Spain, then you may want him to defend your base of operations in Cordoba. If not, maybe send him out on some smaller conquests and see what you can make of him. His heavy cavalry, alongside the two light cav, two infantry, the javelinman and the slinger unit, forms into a fairly decent force, but this won't be enough to conquer all of Iberia. His younger brother is Little Bomulcar, yet to come of age and have his traits assigned. Will he be a nobody or a great conqueror? Who knows? Last, you have Theodocles, starting in Palma, all on his own on this little island. No command, no influence, just two management. Really, the outcast of a family. Surely it has nothing to do with the dopey hat that he always wears. Theodocles is a bit of a loser, but scroll down in the comments section and you can usually find him there. So, go give him some love and support. We love you, Theodocles. Step him outside of the city and you will get another unit of slingers, which are very valuable against the Spanish barbarians. I would try to get him on a boat, sail him to Theophanes, and have them fight together under Theophanes' command. With the slingers and extra cavalry, the force in Cordoba will be able to stand against any barbarian attack. If you choose, however, just to defend your position in Iberia, these troops could be very useful going south and skirmishing with the missile cavalry of Numidia. Again, it all depends on who you plan to target first. Unique features. Your main unique units in this game are the elephants, of which you get three different tiers. These powerful beasts can be great additions to your army, but can also backfire if they end up going berserk behind your own lines. Where you can recruit elephants is interesting. You can only recruit these from cities that have the elephant resource. These cities are shown here, meaning stables are more valuable in these settlements. Personally though, I usually like to avoid them due to the high cost and the fact that they can slow down your troops on the campaign. That money can better be spent elsewhere, in my opinion, but I know many would disagree. However, they can be useful at messing up Roman infantry, which is good as they are your number one threat, given you don't have any decent infantry early on that can match against Rome. Carthage needs to be played historically. You need to find new, creative, tactical ways at using your strengths to defeat those Roman legions. Simple lines of march and infantry won't do. This is why the faction is so fun. It forces you to play different. Carthage also is more likely to spawn skirmisher mercenaries. Oh yes, did anyone know that the mercenaries you can recruit are based off your faction? I only realised this today. For example, as Carthage, if you send someone out at Palma, turn one, you will always get the slingers. Yet if you teleport a Brutii army there, turn one, they will receive a different unit altogether. I only just found that out today and I am doing some research into it. Hopefully I should have a guide of some kind out very soon. Your unique buildings focus on law enforcement. The Execution Square costs 1,600 gold and provides a 10% happiness boost due to law. I would say this is worth it. The next tiers are harder to justify, as each tier doubles in price, yet only provides a 5% boost. But money in this game is easier to get than public order, so I think it is a worthwhile investment in your larger cities late game. The temples. You start with three temples in this game. Tanit, which provides a growth boost. Baal, which provides a public order boost through law. 
you also get the elite sacred band unit from this temple as well. And the third temple is Melkor, sorry, Milkart, which provides a boost to trade. I would avoid Tanit at all costs. You have enough food, and too much food in this game leads to more public order problems later down the line. In the original, where public order is harder to manage, I would put Baal in the larger, faster growing cities to stop them from revolting, and Milkart in the smaller settlements for the extra trade income. In the remaster, public order is not as difficult to handle, so I would go full Milkart. The opening builds Carthage. I would advise the stables upgrade for better cavalry. Your best range units come from mercenaries, and the barracks upgrade only gets you Libyan spearmen for now, which are dreadful. You could also go the economic route instead, perhaps roads or the shipwright, but financially you should be fine for now. It will be units that can counter the Numidians and Romans that you will likely need. Thapsus and Lilibaeum should go for ports to secure that early game trade. Camelis and Palmer need basic farms. Grow the cities fast so you can quickly get the ports, enabling them to trade with other cities. Corduba has a lot of land around it, which is difficult to navigate. If you plan on going on the offensive, build roads first. If you plan on being defensive, focus on the walls or farming. Mines would be good to set up in this city, as you have a source of gold, but not as the first building. Agents. You have two diplomats, one in Carthage, one in Spain. The Numidians will likely come to you anyway, so I would just send the Carthage one on a boat to the Greeks to get trade with the Eastern powers, whereas the one in Iberia will likely not do much. Trade with the Spanish barbarians likely won't last. I would try to use your vast wealth as Carthage to bribe away small pockets of armies on the peninsula. You have a spy in Sicily. Move him to this tile and use him to get a good view of both Masana and Syracuse so you know when and where to strike, using those elephants to get an easy entrance into the city. Time for some cut content. The Temple of Baal was originally going to be a world wonder that you could build later in the game. From the completion of this wonder, characters would gain dread traits due to the human sacrifices they will be able to commit. CA's pre-2004 comments, not mine. Dread did not become a feature in the game, but it did come in with Medieval 2 hurting the morale of your enemies. The Wonder would also grant extra subterfuge traits to your faction leader, another lost mechanic. Secondly, it seems like they intended to have a mechanic where you could recruit other factions' units as mercenaries. Their faction icon was originally meant to be a moon crest on a spear. Lastly, the tutorial campaign was meant to be a Hannibal in Italy campaign. This new cut content information comes from the latest leaked documents planning the game before release, which I will love to cover in more detail in the future. Changes in the remaster. Firstly, as seems to be the case with all factions, the faction leader and their heir both start with the knight attacker trait. Second, if you select the Balance Changes option, this is what you need to take note of. Skirmishers and Peltas of all factions have 15% extra range, but do 25% less damage. Further, Carthaginian Skirmishers get their secondary melee attack increased from 3 to 5, their armor stats increased from 0 to 1, but their cost goes up from 180 to 220. Libyan Spearmen got a massive buff, attack going from 5 to 7, morale from 4 to 6, but the cost from 400 to 450. Overall, a buff that actually makes them somewhat viable in the remaster, 
but avoid them in the original. Lastly, Iberian Infantry. Morale has gone from 4 to 6, armour from 2 to 3, but cost from 240 to 260. Overall, a buff is nice to see, but on high difficulties, these units are still useless. Secret top tip of the day, and this is a juicy one. The Grain Resource provides a 1.5% population growth boost in the city it is located in, and any city it is trading with. Tier 1 ports can trade with one city. Tier 2 ports trade with two cities, etc. So right now, Carthage is trading with Lilibeum, and both cities are getting a 1.5% population boost from the grain. Great. What happens if we build a port in Caralis? Well, the trade in Carthage suddenly sees more profit in Caralis, so redirects it itself. Now Carthage and Caralis are getting the 1.5% population growth bonus, but nothing for poor Lilibeum. So let's upgrade the port in Carthage, and then suddenly Carthage is trading with both, and now all three cities get the 1.5% extra growth. This can be stacked with other grain sources, such as the one in Syracuse, for an even larger boost. Therefore, cities with grain, like Carthage and Syracuse, need the best tier ports possible, so that they can rapidly distribute these grain bonuses to your other cities. Be careful though, if you have trade agreements open, they may prefer to trade with other cities, giving them the bonus instead. For example, if you upgrade Carthage again at the start, and now it can trade with three cities, the third grain supply is going to support the Greeks in Syracuse instead. Although, the way I see it, that just helps the AI develop my future cities. However, it is important to note that in the remaster, grain only provides a 0.5% boost. I will be putting these strategies to the test tomorrow with a 12 hour live stream as Carthage, celebrating the 20th anniversary of Rome Total Wars release. Sunday the 22nd of September, starting at 8am BST. Do not miss it.